who was just here. Yes. Give us the two-minute version of your top priorities, uh, if you're lucky. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I have a ten-point plan that you may have seen. We uh, have it online. Right. Very good. And it, it's a very generalized plan. But in, in essence, uh, we have uh, been in a revolution in the way that we, uh, we apply elections. And we need to make sure that we, uh, we do a good job there, uh, that we continue to build on the successes and the reforms that have been put in place by Jennifer Bruner. But there's another part that really has been under-realized in, in the function of the Secretary of State's office, and that's the business services division. I want to make sure, of course, that we're, if we're administering fair and trustworthy elections and we continue to uh, to, to, uh, to reform the system and make sure people feel their vote counts and is counted, but we really need to look really hard at ways to make that business services division a true asset to business development and job growth. My skill set and experience makes me supremely qualified to do that. I uh, chair development for Columbus City Council. Uh, I'm a small business owner, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure I'm the only one that has taken out an LLC as a, a Secretary of State candidate uh, for to continue my family with small business. Were you a sub S too? Excuse me. Were you a sub S as well, or just an LLC? To LLC. LLC. So, uh, so, so you can see that I, I've got a distinct interest in making sure that, uh, that the business services section it truly uh, works on behalf of the people that we serve. And, and frankly, because, uh, because of the nature of the Secretary of State's office, many people have um, used it as a stepping stone for higher office. And, and, and the, the, the business services division has gotten short shrift. I, right now, as clerk, of course, am reducing, reducing turnaround time and increasing online access for public documents. Uh, I am in the process of instituting e-filing for the people who access documents in the largest, the largest workforce operation of this kind in Ohio. So, uh, so you can see that I want to make sure that we've got e-filing uh, for, uh, for uh, a variety of the, the functions of the Secretary of State's office. There's also an opportunity to take that show on the road and be a true asset for small business development. There are plenty of people out there who have ideas for a small business small businesses and they just need that extra oomph to get it going. I want to start small business seminars on behalf uh, on behalf of those people uh, with the Secretary of State taking the lead uh, uh, in conjunction with the Department of Development and the Department of Administrative Services so people feel that they've got all the information that they need to have a successful small business startup. And then I want to register them to do business in Ohio. And I think that's a, a real good way to make sure that we are uh, continuing to promote a positive business environment here in Ohio. So I'm very excited about getting going and getting that done. How does Ohio compare with other states in attracting businesses as far as uh, hurdles that you just mentioned as well as competitive business environment, taxation, regulation, right. uh, workers' compensation. Right. Well, you know, I mean, again, this is the Secretary of State's office. Right. We, we, I just we, curious register with, right. we register businesses to do business in Ohio. We have an opportunity here to reduce turnaround time, so thereby reducing that amount of, uh, of massive amounts of paperwork that people have to do uh, when they do business in Ohio. Uh, and as far as the business climate is concerned, uh, you know, I think that we, you know, clearly we're, we're, we're suffering from a national recession and we're feeling it here in Ohio. However, the, the unemployment rate has gone down consecutively the past five months. So we are, are, I believe, on an incremental road to success here. And together, each of the, these statewide offices need to look for ways to be an asset, asset to business development and job growth. We can, and we, and we will. Uh, because if we're not doing that, we're not listening to the people. And I've been out there for the past, you know, nearly nine months now, listening to the people. And no matter what you say about the functionality of the Secretary of State's office in elections, they come up to me and say, I've been out of work for two years. And so, so we really need to look for ways uh, to make sure we're an asset. I know that small business development is the economic generator. You know, I know what gets headlines. You know, it's the 1,500 jobs, it's right. the 2,000 jobs. But the true small, the true generator of businesses is small business. So we need to make sure that we're doing the best we can to, to bolster that uh, that in Ohio. And I think that's going to continue to, uh, to to make things better. It's going to be, it's, it's taken us a while to get into the hole. It's going to take us a while to get out. But everybody needs to be rowing in the same direction. We've had several initiatives over the past 15, 20 years about this business centers and making it more accessible. Yeah. and. That, I can remember the one-stop business. That's what we were, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what makes your ideas different? 
Well, it, this is very similar to that, but if it, it hasn't come to fruition because oftentimes the people who are uh, who are talking those things are interested, more interested in running for higher office than they are in actually serving the people as Secretary of State. That's what I want to so do. So it's a question of following through? Is it's a saying? question of follow through. It's a question of being able to break down the barriers, with the, you know, the siloed nature of, of government. You have to break down those barriers and have uh, uh, have true cooperation from the other folks. You know, I mean, uh, we know everybody knows. I used to be a business reporter. Did we know that Delaware is where you know, people go to to register and do business? And it's not just the Secretary of State's in the register and do business. They also have a special court system set up. So, so they're you know there's this well known throughout the country to be you know, this this place that fosters business development. But there are plenty of other places that are applying 21st century technologies to make it easier for people to do business. And that's something. As I said, I'm doing right now as clerk of common police court in Franklin County, in Rhode Island. Right now, uh, you can uh, you can do your uniform commercial code stuff online, and by thereby putting in information in in, in a in a centralized it, uh, um, uh, d database, it, it populates a lot of the other documents that you need to get done. So you only need to do it once. That's the kind of stuff we ought to be looking at uh, in the Secretary of State's office. So uh, the other thing that is interesting is that when the, when the regional liaisons began. Uh, and uh, years ago, they were there to uh, primarily um, be in with the, the top 10 or 20 businesses that, that, that use the business services division uh, in that region. Uh, because, of the, uh, because of the nature of what's been going on and how they, they've trended towards spending more time looking at elections, we need to balance that out and make sure that, that businesses region by region understand that they've got a partner in, uh, in the Secretary of State's office. And, uh, and, and frankly, you know, my, my opponent has said he wants to take this business services and put it elsewhere. He believes it should be in the Department of Development. It's almost 72% of the budget of the Secretary of State's office. And it supports a lot of these functions. When we talk about those regional liaisons, that's, that's through the business services division monies that they get from fees uh, that, that does that. It's, uh, when we talk about the support staff, the, the legal support staff that's in the Secretary of State's office, that's supported by the fees that are generated through the through the business services division. When you talk about the campaign finance staff uh, that gathers all that information and makes it available online and makes sure that people are following along the law, that's that's supported by the money generated from the business services division. So you can see that you know there there doesn't seem to be a clear understanding of what would happen if you took that business services section and, and moved it out. Only 13% of the budget of the Secretary of State's uh, office comes from the general revenue fund. If we continue to be more more aggressive in registering businesses, small business startups to, in Ohio, we have an opportunity to continue to decrease that impact on the general revenue fund, which is a you know real important considering right. the fact that we're facing a significant hole. I have a question. Yes. We have editorialized in instances of both the Democrat Secretary of State and Republican mm -hmm. Secretary of State. The Secretary of State's that wait to the last minute to interfere in the election process, uh, make it very difficult for our election boards to do their jobs. Um, how do you, you? How would you change that? Well, you know, directors directors are an important function of the Secretary of State, but we have to make sure that we're doing this in a timely fashion. My my background and experience is in local government. There's no one else who sits before you as a candidate for Secretary of State who understands as fully as I do. Uh, the, 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 the obstacles, the, the challenges and the successes uh, of, of local government. Uh, right now, just as the Board of Elections has to, uh, has to pull, pull together a budget with the county commissioners, I'm doing that right now as clerk of common police court. You know, I, you know, I understand this. So you're going to find that I, I, I'm a partner to these boards of election, that I'm going to be in there understanding their needs, advocating uh, for them and helping them get the resources that they need to be their best. And when you when you communicate more fully and more completely with people, uh, uh, pre-directive, you're going to have a better opportunity to have that directive be constructive. And eleventh hour directives are uh, are difficult. That they definitely have have put uh, you know been harmful uh, in the application of, uh, of this administration of, of fair elections. So so we need to the more we're communicating, the better we're communicating, the better we're understanding. Uh, the issues that they face, the better opportunity we're going to have to have uh, to, to, to have a smooth process. Okay, what about when the process doesn't work smoothly? And I'm thinking specifically, uh, Secretary Bronner uh, basically intervened in Summit County. She intervened, she threw out everybody in Cuyahoga County. Um, 
How much rope do you give a local election board before you go in and hang them? Well, <laughs> again, there are laws. Both, this is an administrative role. I'm currently an administrator. The legislature passes the laws and the, le and the administrator is supposed to administer them. There are, there are state and federal laws that have to be, that, that people have to abide by. And uh, when, it, when it goes over those bounds, that's when the Secretary of State, by law, needs to step in. And uh, that's what I, I believe that you're see, you see happen. And, and that's the unfortunate nature of the directives. Are, I think we're just following the law, but the timeliness of them is what was most troublesome. Again, when you have someone who is you know, very cognizant of the way local governments work and has dealt with these same types of things, you're going to find a person who is more apt to pick up the phone and have a conversation uh, and try to find out what people need and, and make sure that they get what they need. If they're, you know, if they're, if they're not, if they're not applying the law, you know, they need to, you know, they certainly need to. The Secretary of State needs to stand up and have a little backbone. As uh, Secretary of State, you'll play a major role in the reapportionment procedures. Yes. And, uh, your opponents uh, made a name for himself proposing a procedure to make the uh, reapportionment uh, more bipartisan, less partisan. Do you have any such plan? If not, what's your feeling about that? I, I, I do. And I watched the process fail in the legislature. <coughs> and you understand that uh, despite the fact that he has a majority in the Senate, he somehow couldn't get the votes together to get, the, to get this much needed reform passed and on to the voters of Ohio. But while that was all happening, uh, it occurred to me that uh, you know, this, was, this was really an opportunity lost, and of course, we're not going to have legislative remedy that would be in effect until 2020, uh, no matter what anybody says. What we can do, however, there's nothing in the Constitution that prohibits the apportionment board, as it currently exists, to come together and, uh, and try to apply some of the best practices that were found in the, in the, in the laws that were being proposed. Uh, there's nothing that stops them from doing that. There, there, there are timelines, the makeup of the board uh, is, is set in the Constitution, uh, but, and there's uh, county line rules that are set in the Constitution. But other than that, we can still have a transparent process. We can use a competition, which has been proposed before. We can, uh, we can uh, focus on representational fairness, competitiveness, compactness, uh, holding communities of interest together. Uh, and, and do this in a fair way so that we balance out the state, uh, so, so that no one political party has a partisan advantage going forward. And I can tell you it's real important if you're, if you're interested in people being able to have access to the vote or feel that their vote matters. They need, they need to feel that their representatives in, in, in the Ohio legislature um, uh, you know, represent them, and they don't at this point. Uh, because of the gerrymandered nature of the districts. And we can change that. We can at least begin the change. I'm not saying you can't have or that you shouldn't have legislative remedy. That needs to happen. But any legislative remedy that goes in place now will not take effect until the next apportionment process. We need to do something now because people believe their vote doesn't matter.